GTI is the legendary hot hatch. It's the one that introduces most people to the hot hatch concept, and it's the one that really defines the segment. This is the eighth generation Volkswagen GTI. We might ask, how do car manufacturers keep things fresh? Because if you look at this thing, you might think, well, they did a little bit of styling and not much else, right? Well, all the changes are underneath. That's the good news about this car. And the fact that it's in the eighth generation means refinement. And that is what car manufacturers do to continually push these, to keep them in the minds of enthusiasts. The only hot hatch as close to as well-respected and beloved as the Volkswagen GTI is this, the Honda Civic Si. Now, unfortunately, in this 11th generation, it no longer comes in a hatch, but we're gonna go with the legend anyway. We're gonna accept the fact that it's always been a hatch. And we're gonna talk about it because even Volkswagen knows this is its most direct competitor. We have had random people come down this road in other GTIs and stop at the site of this one, get out and swarm it. People in Honda Civic SIs stopped to look at this Honda Civic SI. The tribal blood runs deep here. These cars have been around for a while, but you know what? I hope they continue to be around a long time because in the only car championship bowl, if you're wanting something fun and you can only have one, which is it? You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. The proportions are the same. It's a little bit longer than the last generation. Otherwise, it's a styling exercise. The lines are crisp. Things are very defined, but they're still very precise. That is the entire theme of this car, is just precision everywhere. I'm looking at this car from the rear thinking, this just looks good. And I love that Volkswagen is painting these colors, bright, beautiful colors. Once you move into the interior, you think I've landed in the future because this is unlike every other GTI, but it's very much like the ID4. We didn't like it there. Guess what? We still don't like it here. Volkswagen, in one move, has gone from an infotainment system that was old to one that's the worst in the industry. Every thing that you need immediately is in a submenu. You might think, well, it's intuitive, but yes, the screen is intuitive if you're only paying attention to it. This climate control system is frustrating. The volume control system is frustrating. Yes, it's all duplicated here on the wheel, but then those aren't buttons either. The instrument cluster has become no gauges at all, which you might miss the gauges, but it's amazing the amount of information they can throw at you at all times here. Admittedly, it looks beautiful, especially at night with the ambient lighting. It looks expensive. It looks unique. I love the honeycomb look. This is what GTIs have always done. It's such a wonderful place to be. These seats are also very comfortable. They are wider in bolstering than the Civic Si, which suggests it's already not going to be as aggressive. They don't hold you as well in corners as a result. But if you're going to commute in a car or you're going to drive cross country, these are far more comfortable than the ones in the Civic Si. There's still good legroom in the back. There's good headroom. This is a genuine four adult vehicle, which is really impressive when you consider how small the package is overall and how much storage you still have in the back. One of the complaints people had in the last generation was the styling of the Civic. It was very love it or hate it. This new one looks like the generation before the 10th. It just has boxy sedan styling. There are some interesting details on it. The direct front view, if you get low enough, is actually really great looking. The front end is now affected very much by pedestrian crash safety standards. And the section that droops that's just above the headlights and the grill, that is called by Honda the upper bumper. The rear window right at the D pillar didn't add to anything. Just end the window, just taper it off. This is a simple driver's cabin. It's not flashy. There isn't anything in here that says, oh, hey, look at me. It's just has the stuff you need where you need it and it makes sense. They've made an entire flush honeycomb panel here and behind that are the vents. So you don't see the slats. You just use the joystick. The seats in this SI are SI-specific seats, and they are better than the ones in the lower models. They've improved the bolsters for your thighs and your torso, and it actually, the seats hold you really well when you're throwing this around a corner. 
Being in this interior after the GTI, you realize that all the same goals were here. They've just been executed very differently. The HVAC controls, they're gorgeous, they're very jewelry-like, and they're very simple. They have, they have clicks. You don't even have to look to know that you changed something because it works like a dial. This car is $10,000 cheaper than the GTI. And when you sit in here, I don't think you can tell. The steering wheel is well positioned. The seats are very good. There's plenty of space in the back. So in the one car championship, let's call these the middle junior flyweights of the single car championship. This car is the winner. Everyday Driver is brought to you by carparts.com. Get the right parts right now at carparts.com. I'm not the biggest fan of Volkswagen cars. It's because of the use of the MQB platform. Not only do they use that same MQB chassis through all of their lineup, they also use this same engine. This EA888 has existed in many forms. It is their ubiquitous two-liter four-cylinder. In this configuration, we have 241 horsepower, 272 pound-feet of torque. This has about 80 horsepower more than the Civic Si. It moves, especially the upper end of the tack. Oh, this thing moves. This is a GTI improvement, and I like having it in a six-speed. I know the DSG is very good, but it takes another layer of involvement away. This six-speed isn't as good as the one in the SI, but it is more approachable. If you don't know how to drive a manual, I'd almost say learn on a GTI, because the shift interactions are just so good. I've also liked GTI so much because they're so easy to drive, they're so easy to extract performance out of. Now this car does not have rev matching, but I love it for its purity. I love it for that. It makes you still have to do it yourself and Volkswagen is still saying, all right, enthusiasts, we're not giving you any help whatsoever. You're still responsible, it's still on you. That's excellent, I love that power up the hill. That is excellent. This car is fast, genuinely fast, and really capable. It lacks a layer of tossable fun that the Civic has, but it is undeniably good. This Civic Si has a 25% smaller engine. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo. And to be honest, I'm a little surprised at how well it does. This now makes 200 horsepower instead of 205 in the 10th generation. It still has 192 pound feet of torque, but guess what? That torque arrives sooner. It's not that plateau anymore. It, it's progressive from way low in the RPM, which is a good thing because this is an even smaller engine than the GTI. Honda brought peak torque down to 1800 RPM and it hangs out till about 5,000. They also moved peak horsepower to just before the red line. It's a bit thrashy, even though Honda has refined the active sound control, especially at the high end, ooh, it's still a little bit thrashy, but you know what? That's what I love about Hondas. They've always sounded mechanical, thrashy and mechanical. It doesn't have the power that the GTI does, but it still feels every bit as fast and playful. It's not. The GTI is actually a little bit faster than this is, but this feels quicker behind the wheel. Yeah, especially right there, that torque comes on real hard. Up a hill, this car, isn't really wanting. Of course I love more power, but it's not like it can't get out of its own way. This generation of the SI has added the rev match feature that was on the Civic Type R. Personally, I kind of like to do it for myself, but at the same time, it is a feature that works very well. And do not think you're not a true enthusiast if you have rev match, because it's made this car very fun and very fast. 
Honda worked on the feel of the shifter. I'm not really sure why. It was already great, but they've made it even better if that's possible. The throws are shorter. They've changed the pedal position. It feels better than it did in the last gen. Maybe it's not better. Maybe I'm just wearing bigger shoes, but I think it's another place that Honda listened because heel toe was really quite difficult for pedal position in the prior generation. In this generation, I'm actually not having any problems. It's a sedan that does things like it shouldn't. And believe me, we love that Civic Type R, but this could be the sweet spot for value. Now, zero to 60, this is almost a second behind that GTI. The GTI is very quick, but this at speed always feels faster and more willing than GTI does. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft. Use the code EVERYDAY22 for 10% off your order. Not only does this have the electronic LSD, it has a differential lock, revised suspension and chassis components. All of these things make it a better car. That diff, you can still feel it working. You can feel it sorting it out. They've talked about how it's supposed to create zero corruption in the steering. There's still corruption in the steering because it's a front wheel drive car that's dealing with a good amount of power in the middle of a corner. It does have adaptable steering ratio. So depending upon what you're doing, it sorts out how much steering you need. And that's done well. Despite this being a front wheel drive car, it has nimble, precise steering. It turns in very, very well. There's still a bit of deadness. There's still a little bit of vagueness here. All the weights over the front wheels, of course. But this is just fun. And that's why you buy a hot hatch. This GTI has adaptive suspension, and I have to say that it's the best one I've encountered on a GTI. Many times when you go from normal to sport on a Volkswagen product, it's just not enough. I love adaptive suspension. It's almost like every car that has it available, we have to recommend because it changes the dynamics of the car so dramatically. It makes it instantly better. This GTI feels like I'm driving a 3 Series in comparison to that Civic. It feels like an entire class bigger than the Civic does. It has a much more luxurious, softer feel, even though I'm in sport mode and even though this has improved over the last gen. There's so much energy in this car. And by that I mean what the chassis is doing, how the balance is. And it's just over 3,100 pounds, which in sports car land is pretty good. It's amazing to be in the GTI and realize how capable it is and how good these Bridgestones are, and it never feels as tight and playful as the Civic does. It just doesn't. Honda knows what they're doing. They have refined this car, and that's just it. More refinements, continual refinements. It's impossible to completely mute all those front wheel drive sensations. You can still tell that the limited slip differential is working on all of the power you just asked that tiny little motor to send up front. You can also tell that that tiny little motor is gonna need just a split second to gather itself to really give you more power than you expect. This car is still a genuine matchup to that GTI. How can that be? It has so much less power. Well, it's lighter and the chassis does wonderful things. The body control here is much more taut, much more athletic feeling. This car drives younger than the GTI does. It has a, a lighter on its feet, more lithe and playful demeanor, and the GTI feels like I'm very good at what I do, but I'd also like to sit down later. Honda has pulled parts from the Civic Type R. The spring rate is stiffer, the roll bars are thicker, and that has changed dramatically this into a genuine sports car even though it's no longer offered in the hatch. This is just fun. It wants to be your playful companion. It's a puppy dog car. I know that's a cliche, but mm, this car's just a joy to drive quickly. That's the key thing that the Volkswagen is lacking, is it lacks this level of playful joy. You can rotate it under braking in fantastic front wheel drive fashion. The turn-in is not as instant and precise and nimble as that GTI, but it feels natural. 
to the point where you're going to not notice it anymore. When a car becomes mesmerizing through corners and it just continually has a natural, consistent feel, that's when it's good. This one is excellent. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Griot's Garage. Use the code EDRIVER for 10% off your order. These cars are just trading blows. I'm so intrigued by that. It's interesting that there isn't one category or many categories where either car just dominates. It's making the decision hard. Man, these camps are strong. There are some serious fans of both these cars. And I don't know that the GTI guys will ever shop a Civic Si and the Si guys are ever going, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a Volkswagen. I doubt that's ever going to happen. But the truth is both of these cars are improved from the prior gen and they are amazingly different in spite of having incredibly similar histories and desires for what makes a good car. This car, begs to be beat on through corners. And the cool thing is, even on freeways, it's excellent. It's nice to be in, put it in comfort mode. It's great. The party trick with the GTI is how it is a do-everything car, how much it offers you a luxury driving experience when you don't want to drive fast. And then it gives you all of the madness when you do. It just lacks a little bit of fun as a result. Honda listens. They listen, I think, like no other car company. I wasn't convinced at first. Low speeds, the car is fine. The faster and harder I drive this car, the more impressed I am by it. And then I keep thinking about the price. <laughs> no, wait, yeah. This is a very fun car. It's more fun than the GTI, but it asks more of you, and it is a harder, more aggressive ride. It's very well controlled, but it's abrupt. If I were to try to convince you to even consider the other car, you're on a team. You already know which one you're choosing. The Volkswagen is excellent. It got better. All the goodies are under the skin. Mm -hmm. The skin is lightly changed. As they always do. But nevertheless, the VW is great. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. I love it. But then I looked at the Monroney. Mm -hmm. It's almost $40,000. And at 40K, now you're starting to consider sports cars. Rear wheel drive, I could maybe afford something different. That's right, and even bigger cars too. Correct, but then there's this thing. Mm -hmm. Under 3,000 pounds, under $30,000, it grew. It shouldn't get better. The <laughs> wheelbase grew. It should be less nimble, right? And Honda has done something here amazing. I really like it. I'm glad because I really like the Civic as well. I can't believe how good this GTI is, but I shouldn't be surprised because the GTI is the king of the all-in-one. You buy one car, it does everything. It's a luxury car most of the time. It's a fun car when you need it to be. The GTI has always been a leader in that. That's why it's the king of the hot hatches. It's still that good. And I actually think it's a little better than the 7 was. I agree, absolutely. But I don't think it's fun enough. I had more fun in the Civic the price of the GTI holds it back for me. And the other thing is, I'm sorry, but the interface is terrible. It is. Yeah. So that holds the car back too. I'm gonna go Civic. I'm going Civic too. Now, Honda owners, you need to acknowledge how good the GTI is it's because great. it's excellent to drive. It's brilliant. But at $40,000, Volkswagen owners, you need to drive a Civic Si, the new one, the 11th generation, because it is so good. And then when you factor in mm. price, there's no contest. If you love GTIs, this is the best one yet. And I say yet because I don't know what'll happen. Will there be a ninth? Maybe. It might be hybrid. I don't know. But now, this is an excellent car. This is awesome. I, I would totally own this car. But then I think almost $40,000. At that price level, other ideas pop into your head, like 2.0 Toyota Super Turbos. This has that, that German refinement that rounds off the edges and kills the fun in the process. 
I know Volkswagen fans right now are yelling at me and telling me that I have to just do this, and you have to tune it and that kind of stuff, but this is my point. Volkswagens are cars you have to change to make them what you want them to be. This is something that Volkswagen is struggling with, where their cars don't bring quite enough fun, but they're very well engineered and are absolutely finely tuned. I didn't think I was going to like the SI this much, and I do. SI is number one for me. And even though I love the German engineering feel, I love that tight, solid thing, and I love how that GTI moves, it's gotten really expensive. This is the right balance of price and performance. This is not the luxury choice, plus you saved $10,000 here. This is the more aggressive choice. But if you're a person who really likes to feel what a car is doing, you're going to be happier here than you would be in the GTI.